God bless you. We thank God for another Wednesday night Bible class. We thank God for you tuning in to Agape Worldwide Ministries, our Bible class every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Amen. Hallelujah. And we, we, our intent is to go through God's word. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Timothy to study, to show yourself, to prove unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So it's so important that we, first of all, study uh, to get ourselves approved unto God and to rightly divide the word of truth. And so we just thank God for all of you that are listening via our conference call, those that are watching via our YouTube channel, Agape Web TV. Amen. And we're just grateful to the Lord for his blessings. The blessings of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrows to it. Amen. And so we just thank God for you today. We're going to go through our books of the Bible. We're going to go from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. We're going to quote our books. Amen. And you can go along with me and quote the books and try to do it from memory if you want or look and view it. Amen. In your Bibles as well. Let's begin. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and Revelation. Amen. Those are the books of the Bible. Amen. We are to, the Bible says, to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. Work we need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Hallelujah. So today we are, uh, as a, our journey through the scriptures, uh, through the Bible itself, we are in the book of Leviticus, third book of the Bible, the five books of the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible are written by Moses. Amen. Hallelujah. And he uh, writes what God instructs him to write. But again, we have to understand what came first, uh, or tradition, or scripture. And many of us believe that scripture came before oral tradition, but it's not the case. It's the other way around. Amen. Or tradition came before scripture. Moses didn't live in the time in the days of Noah. Moses did not live in the days, amen, hallelujah, of Adam. Moses didn't live in the days of Job. Hallelujah. So, amen, those stories, amen, was passed down from the descendants, amen, and from the people of God. And so those stories that was written were written later, amen. Job is the oldest book of the Bible as far as which was written first. Chronologically, we know we're dealing with Genesis in the beginning of all things, but Job is, is the one that was written. It was the first book written. So it, it beats even Leviticus and the Pentateuch. So, so we need to understand that a lot of these translations, when we talk about translation from the Old Testament and the Hebrew and, and the translation into English, into Greek, and into uh, Aramaic and all these different languages, the three main languages in, this, in the Bible is Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Amen. And so um, 
in this particular case the Old Testament mainly is Hebrew amen the traditional Hebrew uh, Old Testament Hebrew amen and so um, and that's what we're dealing with as far as translation and some of the words I preface that by saying when I when we get into the meat of this uh, chapter um, there's different translations from different sources that that suggest different things and so that's why I wanted to preface it by saying that um, it's not really um, um, the translation that's the pertinent thing is what God was saying his, his meaning and what he was saying and the rituals and the things that they had to do to um, um, to keep themselves clean and pure before God now what we're dealing with now we're dealing with the different sicknesses and disease last week we was talking about the ceremonial cleansing and how you got to get the two turtle doves and the pigeon and and they didn't go to the store and buy it amen they they hunted they hunted for the different animals um, that you see here that they needed to use as far as the offerings uh, unto the Lord amen and in the 15th chapter where we at the in the 15th chapter of uh, Leviticus we um, we just came through the ceremony cleansing of leprosy in the 14th chapter and now we're dealing with the running issue of men and, and, the, and the issue of women uh, it's talking about the issues of women it's talking about um, now if you have children listening tonight and I'm going to give you a little disclaimer as they do on TV um, uh, we will be talking about uh, I won't be going in depth with it but it's kind of self explanatory if you if you listen amen but um what i will do is this i will go through it and at the end if anybody have any questions um we'll do it that way just in case there's some children listening and you don't want to go into all that <laughs> so um we won't go into the there's communicable diseases there's a natural cycle of a woman uh there's there's natural functions of a man um in his love for a woman amen and so so those those things are kind of sort of the subject uh how to be clean between uh the woman be clean the husband and wife be clean everybody clean uh before god and so that's basically what the 15th chapter is dealing with uh all right so <laughs> let's just dive in and see what happens all right uh leviticus 15 chapter 15 and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue he is unclean. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue, or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is his uncleanness. Every bed whereon he lieth that hath the issue is unclean, and every thing whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. Okay, basically, if you, blood is coming from a place blood don't normally come from. So I'm trying to keep this, you know, G. Uh, if it's coming from a place that, you know, that you don't normally bleed from outside of, like, your skin or something like that, you get cut or something, uh, then... You have to separate yourself. Like I said, these communicable diseases, if you had a disease or, or sickness, um, someone else can easily catch it. Just like today, even with all the medication and medicines that we have of today, um, there are still very, very you know, highly uh, contagious diseases out there. And the first thing they do is isolate you. The first thing they tell you to do is get it. They'll tell you, don't bring your kids to daycare if, if they have a cold and don't come to work with the cold and so even today isolation is the first uh, uh, remedy is one of the first treatments uh, to these diseases and so it, it was no different than what it was back then as well and he that sitteth on anything whereon he sat that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and he that toucheth the flesh of him that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, 
and be unclean until the even. And if he that hath the issue spit upon him that is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. I, I was reading in my notes that there's like an Eastern and Oriental uh, Asian uh, tradition of when you're angry at somebody from this era, this time, maybe, I don't know, I never hear about this today, that, you know, they would, they would, um, <laughs> explorate that's a fancy way of saying spitting on you amen and so that's that's a way of you know they they're angry or they're mad at you and so um I, I, it, my notes said that this was giving reference to to that that tradition amen of uh, explorating on on other people and what saddle soever he rideth upon that hath the issue shall be unclean and whosoever toucheth anything that was under him shall be unclean until the even. And he that beareth any of those things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. Now everything, you got to wash yourself, you get clean, wash your body clean, wash your clothes, the basins, the, the bowls, the cups, any containers, anything, you know, ba uh, basically has to be if it can't be washed if it's porous like clay pots and like it says uh, of earthen vessels and all these things clay basically clay pots uh, um, or vases you have to, they have to be broken and destroyed and whomsoever he toucheth that hath the issue and hath not rinsed his hands in water he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and the vessel of earth that he toucheth which hath the issue shall be broken, and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. And when he that hath an issue is cleansed of his issue, then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water, and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, and come before the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and give them unto the priest. And the priest shall offer them, the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord for his issue. The reason to bring up the subject of the issues, one, people have it, is you can't put your head in the sand and, and pretend nobody gets sick or, or diseases or anything happens, amen, to, to even the people of God. And two, uh, the reason to bring it up is that there is an antidote. There's a way that they can be cleansed. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay, amen, suffering. You don't have to suffer through this. There is a cleansing. There is an antidote. There is a healing, amen, for God's people. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days, and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And whosoever toucheth anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And if it be on her bed, or on anything whereon she sitteth, when he toucheth it, he shall be unclean until the even. And if any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him, he shall be unclean seven days, and all the bed whereon he lieth shall be unclean. Uh, we're talking about the flowers, is talking again, um, um, the cycle, and if any fluids get on him, it should be, uh, he's unclean. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. Every bed whereon she lieth, all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation. And whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean. 
as the uncleanness of a separation. And whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. But if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. And on the eighth day she shall take unto her two turtles, or two young pigeons, and bring them unto the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord for the issue of her uncleanness. Thus shall ye separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, that they die not in their uncleanness, when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. This is the law of him that hath an issue, and of him whose seed goeth from him, and is defiled therewith, and of her that is sick of her flowers, and of him that hath an issue, of the man and of the woman, and of him that lieth with her that is unclean. Amen. So... Um, that basically kind of self-explanatory, but uh, just talking about keeping yourself clean and your dealings with each other is clean. And even um, the issue that is between him and her um, is 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 referring to um, a like a venereal disease. And so, um, uh, in one translation, it talked about that being uh, from the Septuagint. Uh, meaning um, a venereal disease. So, uh, but if there's any issue of blood <clears throat> of her, and an issue that's from him, that's the that, you know, uh, that's not normal. I mean, most guys don't bleed. Amen. Unless you cut them. Amen. So, um, then this is what this is what the responsibility is to do, and it's just it's for you to get right with God. And it's also for um, um, the, the safety of the community because, again, they're traveling together. They're going from um, the Sinai Peninsula to, uh, to the Promised Land. They left Egypt, Sinai Peninsula, get the, get the Decalogue, the, the, the commandments, and now they're getting the lifestyle um, rules and regulations of how to govern themselves and what to do in certain situations. And so um, that now you got the breakdown of what they were supposed to do when there is an issue, uh, or his issue, her issue, or their issue together, and what to do in those circumstances. All right. Amen. Are there any questions or comments about chapter number 16? I mean, 15. Yeah, they already know me. Anybody have any questions? It it is, it is. I would say yes. I'm not a historian, but I would say I would say yes. They would get, that's that's pretty much was their guidelines for pretty much anything. But if you if you count the numbers of days of the cycle, Amen. Then you count the number of days they had to separate themselves, Amen. I guess that's why you know I guess they could get along well because they wasn't around each other for two weeks out of the month, you know. So uh, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> So you only had like two weeks of of of, of uh, uh, where nobody was set aside from anybody. So, um, and if and if it was extended, as it, as it broke down in that chapter, uh, those that had extended their cycle extended, or it was well anyway, it was beyond what's normal. Um, then they had to add extra time. 
you know, and do extra things. And so, um, and so God just wanted to make sure everybody was square, everybody was clean, everybody was holy before God and make sure that, amen, nobody else could catch or get on, you know, catch what you, what you might have had, or if it's normal, a, a, a normal process of, 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 of your anatomy, um, then it's, it, then, you know, it's good to get right with God and get it back with and get right with God's people. And it's good to know that God is uh, so detailed and so intricately involved in your daily day to day life. Amen. That he cares enough to even amen. Want to make sure that you are good with him. You're good with your wife. You're good with the community. Amen. And everything is, everything is uh, what we would say copacetic. Amen. Everything is all right with everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it's just a blessing to know. Amen. It may be subjects we don't like to deal with and talk about, but everything in life is, is covered in the Word of God. Now, everything in life is covered in the Word of God. And so, you know, I might be uncomfortable dealing with these subjects. Amen. But it's, 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 it's in the Bible. We said we were going through the Bible, and this is in the Bible. So we have to deal with every subject. Amen. Daniel in the lion's den is, you know, that's good. That's a nice story. Amen. But, but you know, these uh, Leviticus, when we come through these scriptures here, it's not pretty. It's not no cute story. You don't see nothing blowing up or angels flying and you don't, nothing, you know, nothing so dramatic. Amen. That you see on some movie. There ain't no movie made from Leviticus. I, ain't, I haven't seen too many made, movies made. Amen. The story of Moses, yeah, we see, you know, the 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 the, uh, the the Red Sea and the plagues and all that yes we saw all that but uh, you don't see all these laws there's no there's no there's no movie about that because it's not cute it's not pretty it's not you know it's not dramatic um, but it's important it's important it's vital uh, to the health and welfare of the people of God and so that's why we need to address the subject and even in ministry. Uh, that's the reason why the devil is running so rapid today. That's the reason why so many, so much uh, outside of God's word and his will is being allowed today, even in the church, is because we won't talk about these subjects in church. Uh, and, and these subjects need to be addressed in church, in ministry, because we don't tell people what the word of God say about it until after they're, they've fallen from grace. Then we say we should have. We should not have, and God don't allow that. And you're in, we're condemn them um, uh, in the sin, but don't tell them about the sin until they sin. And so that's not that's not uh, right. And so that's why God was given the laws and the rules, and 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 what to do ahead of time. So if this happened, you know what to do. Just like with the leprosy, you know what to look for. This is the color of, you see a hair, you see a white hair, you see this, you might see it in the walls and, and you got to take out the bricks and take the plaster off. And if it's at home and there's an issue, and if it's bleeding and, and all, this is what to do. And that's what we should be doing. We should be talking to our young people. We should be talking to our people. Amen. Maybe not on Sunday morning over the pulpit. That might, my, 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 that might not be the place to do it. Amen. But it, it needs to be discussed and 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 talked to uh, uh, with our young people about what God expects from us, even before, uh, especially before uh, something goes down and we try to condemn them for what they did when we didn't warn them about what was coming. You know, and we didn't we didn't approach these subjects. They might not be comfortable, but the Bible has never been comfortable. <laughs> amen. I'm going to talk about that Sunday, but amen. It's never been comfortable. Amen. Hallelujah. But uh, it's, it's been necessary. It's necessary for life and living and salvation and holiness and righteousness. Amen. And that's our approach. We want to we want to bring people just like the people that are sick and they got issues or whatever it may be. We want to see what we can do to get them healed and cleansed and they shall be clean. You hear them over and they shall be clean. They might have to wait till the evening, but they had to to the evening, but they had to they'll be clean. And that's our that should be our goal to get God's people, Amen, lined up with God and cleansed before God and, and, and walk in righteousness in God. Amen. Even I think Paul so over there, amen, in uh, Ephesians, I believe, the fourth chapter, he said he gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying, the building up. 
of the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's important for us to build up the body. And so this is talking about the physical body, the physical body, not the spiritual body. We so good about the spirit. We can put on a good performance and get people all excited and they'll walk out the door speaking in tongue. Amen. But you still got some physical issues that you got to deal with. Amen. You still got to deal with that flesh. Hallelujah. And so and so we need to deal with that as well. All right. All right. Any 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 questions? Anybody have any other questions or comments about Amen? Chapter number fifteen of the Book of Leviticus. I, I think It's necessary. It's necessary. Yeah. Well, the word don't meet me where I live. Well, they, you're not hearing the word. You know, you don't, you, you're not hearing the word preached to you. You, you. you know, you just can't preach the stories and the good stories. And the, this is practical living where they talk about how the, how the rubber meets the road. Amen. This is a practical living for life. And so it's so important for us as believers to, amen, uh, hear what we need pertaining to life. Amen. Hallelujah. God knoweth all things. He has all things pertaining to life and righteousness. Amen. So we just thank God for that today. At this time, if there's any prayer requests, uh, please make the uh, prayer request known. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask the saints pray for our preachers. Amen. It seems like our preachers are going through stuff and, and different things. And uh, 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 and pray for our, our, our pastors and leaders and and the churches and the ministries, amen, that we, amen, stand in the evil day and haven't done all the stand, stand there for, amen. Uh, anybody else have a prayer request today in Jesus' name? Any other prayer requests? Well, we just thank God for you today. Mother, if you would start us off in prayer and I'll close out in the name of Jesus.
God touch my mind, Jesus. touch my heart, and touch my will, that I will walk up right before you and do your will, in Jesus' name. God, we just thank you for another Wednesday night Bible class. We thank you for the lessons learned, amen, and taught and learned, amen, of the children of Israel. And as you gave your servant Moses the instruction as to how to get people cleansed, amen, from all the issues, Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to help us, Lord God. We have some issues, maybe not of blood, maybe some of blood, but some not of blood, Lord God, of spirit and of mental issues and some problems and situations that we have through struggles that we're going through Lord God and we ask Lord that your hand be upon just like you had an antidote for the children of Israel Lord God you are the answer for the world today you are our answer you are our antidote you are our bomb in Gilead you are our physician Lord God and we ask Lord God that you bless touch deliver right now heal make a way out of no way open doors that seem closed bless your people everywhere Lord God help us stand up and do what's right Lord God help us do what's pleasing in your sight be the children of God, you call for us to be in these last and evil days. Help us, Lord God, amen, of thy salvation, Lord God, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us. Purge away our sins for thy name's sake. We are thy people and sheep of thy pasture. We'll give thee thanks forever. We will show forth our praise through all generations. We just thank you for your blessings, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for Jesus Christ who died, amen, had the biggest issue of all, amen. He shed his blood, amen, for the sins of the world. And, Lord God, we thank you for the sacrifice of his blood. And his blood, amen, it was very contagious. Amen. But not in a bad way, Lord God. Hallelujah. That blood washed away our sins. Amen. And renewed us and brought us back into at one minute with you, God. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus. Lord God, hallelujah. We ask you to bless, touch, and deliver, Lord God. We want to share that blood with as many people as we can, Lord God. Help somebody to call on the name of Jesus today. Help somebody to receive you as their personal Savior and say, Lord, I just receive you. Come into my heart. Save me. Fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Fill them, Lord God. Hallelujah. Not with religion, not with dogma, Lord God, not with man's frailties, but with the spirit of the living God, the Holy Ghost, the paraclete, that holy thing. Hey, God, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on your people. We need your Holy Ghost. We need your power. We need your glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, no no pretense, no games. Hallelujah. All this form of fashion that we're seeing today, this cute church, Lord God, that we're seeing today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Help us to move aside everything, every weight and the sin that so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let us remove the form of godliness. Hallelujah. And, and deny the power thereof and, and, and worship you in spirit and in truth, in true godliness. Hallelujah. And see your power. You say, I shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. And Lord God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Ghost, the anointing, hallelujah, of your Holy Ghost, your approval, your writ of approval, Lord God, for your people. Bless, touch, and deliver right now. Bless the sick and the shut and heal somebody. Deliver, set free right now by the power of your Holy Word. Those bereaved families, Lord God, those in transition doing things, Lord God, to... Oh God, to adjust to a, a new life that they don't know exists because the life that they had had the person in it. Lord God, so they don't know, amen, what tomorrow bring them. Lord God, bless and heal those that preparing for surgery. And Lord God, the doctor that said this and that. Lord God, hallelujah, Lord God. But you have the final say. We speak healing right now in the, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Deliver your preachers, Lord God, that are going through the struggle, going through the rigor, Lord God. Hallelujah. And bless those, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. You know the situation. You know the conditions. And Lord God, we ask your hand be upon your people. These and all blessed we ask in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And amen. 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 God bless you, people. Amen. Family, we thank God for you watching and those that are listening. Amen. We thank God for you joining us here for our Bible class every Wednesday night. Amen. It's Bible class every Sunday morning is our intercessory prayer service. I mean, it is our intercessory prayer at 10 a.m. Mercy seat. Amen. 11 o'clock is our morning worship service. At 3 p.m. is our auxiliary service. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. This Sunday morning. Amen. The Lord's give me a word. Amen. Hallelujah. Comfort for the captive. Hallelujah. So come on out Sunday. Amen. And hear what the Lord has to say to you today. Coming from the book of Isaiah, the 40th chapter. I mean, son, uh, yeah, Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Amen. Comfort ye, my people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And ask the Lord to bless, touch, and deliver right now. 
amen, in the lives of us and his people today, amen, hallelujah. As we ask God to pray, amen, and bless us today, we just want God's blessings upon our lives, amen, hallelujah. And again, we thank God for you taking a journey with us, amen, through the word of God, amen, as we, amen, learn more about him, amen, hallelujah, as we learn more about the word of God and the will of God, hallelujah, we want God's power to be ever prevalent in the lives of his people. Amen. Hallelujah. So we just thank God for you. Amen. Keep us in prayer as we pray for you in the name of Jesus. Now our closing scripture coming from the book of 1 Timothy 1.17. It reads, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Let the church say, Amen. Hug somebody. Tell them that you love them. This is the Agape Way. God bless you. And God bless you too.